All right, good morning. So, uh, last week we saw the face from the side, the head from the side. Um, I forgot to mention a couple of things. So, um, one is this, the Nazion, the position of the Nazion in relation to the, 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 the pupil, it's a little bit higher than that, right? Not necessarily this side could be lower, could be a little bit higher, but it's typically in a Caucasian nose, always a little bit higher than the pupil. So in here, I also want to block in the um, base of the neck here, right? Um, coming down at an angle like this, uh, this is the basically the, the the first rib where the neck connects with the rib cage. At this point in here, I have <clears throat> the collarbone coming back like this, and um, this is the sternum. This is the back spine. The um, head of the uh, humerus is going to be here. Let me show you. <clears throat> See the highest point in here coming down from the highest point in here going uh, just behind the jawline right? and the ear we have seen is going to be positioned posteriorly to that, right? posteriorly to the jawline and to the center line of gravity. Uh, the, in the erect position, the head of the humerus is going to be behind the center line of gravity and below the clavicle here. So this is where I'm going to, uh, to attach the arm. right? Another um, structure that we need today is um, just below the, the base of the skull, just behind the ear, um, there's a bump in here. That bump is called mastoid process. It's a bone, and uh, that's what it is, right? That's the bone. I need this because that's where the sternocleidomastoid muscle will attach. So, um, Let's look now at the face from um, the front. So I want to draw um, an ovoidal form, and I could do it a little bit more elongated or a little bit rounder. I go for the elongated, but we can subdivide, subdivide the humanity in two types of heads. Right? One is a little bit rounder like this, and the ratio of the height to width of this head is typically, if it's close to, to three quarters, right? And this one instead, <clears throat> the more elongated face, is two thirds, meaning, meaning the, <clears throat> the width. The ratio of the height and width are um, one to two thirds. So um, why do I need that? Because when I look at somebody, I want to find immediately um, parameters. Am I looking at this person and saying, oh, that person's face is more elongated uh, or a little bit rounder. So when I draw, I already know what type of um, frame I have to build, where to position the facial features. So uh, now in here, what I could do, I could draw a circle in here, more or less. I, and uh, with good approximation, this uh, will be a third, one, two, three, a third of the total length. I need this because at the uh, lower third, I find the base of the nose. At the upper third, right here, I'm going to have more or less the brow ridge. So the face, as is also described by Leonardo, is about two thirds. The face, meaning from the brow ridge to the to the chin, two thirds of the total height of the head. Right. So I block in the brow ridge in here, and um, the nose. It looks a little bit too long. No, that should be okay. So the nasion is going to be a little bit below. The, the, the line of the brow ridge, right? So see this point in here? This is the brow ridge. The nasion is here, right? A little bit lower than that, okay? So you see also this V here. So I'm gonna create this V here. And now I know that my eyes, the, the, the irises, are going to be a little bit lower than that point. So my eyes are gonna be along 
this line in here. So this line in here, where my pupils are going to be, should be slightly <coughs> um, above the midpoint, right? So let's see. Yeah, that's good. See that? Meaning <coughs> the proportion of this lower part of the face, actually the measurement of this part of the face is slightly bigger than the top, okay? With with variation. So now <coughs> I can block in the nose in here, the, the mouth. We have seen last week how the mouth is going to be, um, I don't know, I don't like it. It's going to be, <coughs> um, not halfway between the nose and the chin is going to be a little bit higher than that right so the halfway would be here even even less than that the mouth is above the midpoint higher than the midpoint right so meaning the upper lip the upper lip is the is all the fleshy part it goes from basically the base of the nose to to here right? not just the fleshy part of the lips in here is this one here is smaller than this portion in here okay so now if i don't make the uh, proportion forehead to face correct the subject will look like a troglodyte right with a small sloping forehead okay so now um now we have positioned the basic features eyes nose and mouth and now let's see um the neck right we're gonna add the neck here and here and then the length of the neck is going to be variable greatly variable depending on person to person so but typically is about one-third of the total of the height of the head right about one-third quite a few people have a longer neck than that right so you look at your subject and relate it to the size of the face and then see you have a correct proportional relationship between the neck and the face. And let's look now at the angle. Now I have a, an egg, no? Upside down egg. Oh, clavicles, right? Here and, and uh, trapezius. So, <clears throat> um, the first, uh, the first, the widest point, right? The widest point of the head is going to be here about at the upper third about at the level of the uh, brow ridge so meaning this is the widest point from here I go narrower from here I go narrower right so now let's find the other point I go down until I find the corner of the jaw where is the corner of the jaw it can be uh, in various positions so in um, <clears throat> what I want to do, I want to relate this change of angle here to the mouth. Is it above the mouth? Is it below the mouth? What is it? So let's say it's at the level of the lower lip, right? And then you're going to see in your subject exactly what it is. So this is the widest point. This is the corner of the jaw. That's the chin, right? There's another angle here, right? At this point in here, I have another change here right and that's the temporal ridge temporal ridge here and then you could draw a whole nice curved top or you could break it in uh, further planes really it's up to you right so this will live give me the sort of my cat wants to get out but I'm not gonna now um, so <clears throat> now at this point in here I have the brow ridge, right, and the nasion, and uh, this point in here, the temporal ridge, will give me the top of the side plane. So from here, I go down here, right, to the point where the upper margin of the orbit turns on this side. From here now, I want to go down to this, to the to the chin, right. And uh, now I have the, the the side plane, the frontal plane, and the top plane are not defined yet. So what I do is more or less where <clears throat> this line of the temporal ridge curves here to go toward the side, I find the division between 
the, the top plane and the frontal plane, okay? So, uh, once you block in the eyes, which we have seen are just above the midpoint. Now, let me see if I have it right. Yeah, the top could be a little bit bigger, but that's fine. I'm going to reduce the chin. Um, so, um, now I have the brow ridge here. I have the nasion. I have the glabella. This is the glabella. All these terms you're going to find you're going to find in, in, in the books. I don't want to waste time writing down um, names for now. Um, so, the wings of the nose, the tip of the nose, the nasolabial furrow, the upper lip, right? And the lower lip, right? Eyelid, eyelid, and uh, <clears throat> you see how your, our creature now start taking start, start taking shape. No, uh, the corner of the mouth. I have two little uh, nodules, right? And uh, below the uh, below the lips in here, I have the pillars of the mouth because. Uh, the, the the lips will um, the below the lip in here. See how this portion goes down like this, and create a, a shaded area, and and um, sorry, and that's my, and that's what it is, right? This shaded area. Now, uh, I want to start introduce uh, actually the ears. Let's put the ears on. So the ears are going to be between the brow ridge and the nose, more or less, as a measurement, right? So here. But depending if I move the head up or down, the ears are going to be um, related differently to the proportions of the face, okay? So um, now uh, I want to introduce uh, the um, the neck, right? because next video I want to go over the neck. So I need to know where the... Uh, mastoid process is because the sternocleidomastoid goes from the sternum, sternal, cleido, clavicle, and mastoid process. So it does this, meaning the name of this muscle will tell me origin and insertion. So origin of the sternocleidomastoid is the sternum, the clavicle, and the mastoid process is the insertion. This muscle, which is that beautiful muscle that makes that V, right? Um, is um, it's very very elegant um, and goes just see behind the ear here so you can really see um, the this muscle in here when you turn the head right and left pops up so now this is the top of the sternum right this is the clavicle or collarbone and um, this is the vanubrium right so now the base of the skull, imagine this. This is the head, the, the, the cranial volume, and this is the facial mask, right? The sternocleidomastoid, sorry, the mastoid process is going to be just at the base here of the cranium, but behind the jaw, so you don't see it, right? So it's at the base of the cranium here, see that? You don't see it from the front but it's gonna be just back behind the jaw at the base of the cranium. So, knowing this, knowing this, I know that the ear, see that the mastoid process is just behind the ear. So if I saw the ear, if I know where the ear is, I know that the sternocleidomastoid will start from just behind the ear and behind the jaw. And we'll go here to the corner here of the, the, the side of the um, manubrium of the sternum, the top of the sternum, leaving this portion here empty. That is the jugular fossa, right? And so now I go from here, down to here like this, right? Down to here like this. And then there's a flat portion of this muscle in here, right? So down like this, down like this, and down like that, right? So this portion here tend to be chunkier. This portion tend to be flatter. This is going to be the 
the neck basically and that is the trapezius right so some of you asked me to start addressing the neck so this is good part of it but <clears throat> i'm going to show you also a side view of the neck uh next uh, with the next video and um, in the meanwhile practice practice drawing um these um uh, these uh, uh, little schematic views of the face. <clears throat>